and welcome to Two Dudes Sports Show. Back here after the semester break, I'm Quinn Kelly with TJ Hartnett, and we're ready to get right back in to another semester of Two Dudes Sports Show. TJ, how are you? It's an absolute pleasure to be back. Uh, I miss Two Dudes. It was uh, an integral part of my life here at Boston College, and, and since the break, it's it's definitely good to get back into the swing of things. It feels right to be back, and uh, we had a great, great break, both of us. I think I could speak for both of us when, we, when I say that. And uh, we have a lot to talk about because a lot happened over the break involving mostly one sport, and that would be football. It's mostly the topic we're going to cover today, everything from, I guess, the college football playoff to the devastating loss in the Yankee Stadium, as we all know, and the Super Bowl that's approaching very fast and very happily up for people in this area. Not so much for me, but I'm here and I'll witness it. So we'll just get right into it. We're going to talk about, like I said, pinstripe bowl first, then we'll move into, uh, if anybody wants to call in, the call-in topic for anybody out there listening. Who will win the Super Bowl from the four teams that are left? That's our call-in topic tonight. Then we'll talk about college football and Ohio State's big victory in the college football national championship. And finally, a roundabout of the NFL team. So getting right off the bat, we'll move into that devastating game, December 27th at Yankee Stadium, a brisk Saturday night and a brisk wide right to end the game. Yep. Boston College falls to Penn State. Penn State gets back on their winning ways after being, I think, three or four years vacated from a bowl eligibility spot. So, Quinn, if you could sum up the game in one word, give it to me. Um, if I could sum up the game in one word, it would have to be typical. Yeah. It would have to be typical because, um, BC obviously played a really tough team in Penn State, uh, a team that skill-wise, I mean, maybe not on paper, but definitely skill-wise, it's a team we can compete with. Absolutely. We played, I mean, if you want to, if you want to label teams, Florida State, Clemson, Louisville, USC, off the top of my head, better than Penn State. No doubt. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. For sure. And we hung with all those teams, excluding yeah. Louisville. Right. And you know what? Their teams, there, there's just a wider. Nope. There goes our computer. There goes the computer. There's a wider margin than ever of teams that we can um, that we can hang with. You know, I mean, like obviously, you know, in in the days of Matty Ryan, we were hanging with everybody. We were up there, made it up to number two at one point. Sure. But right now, BC is at another peak. We've had a bit of a valley, and we're you know we're turning to uh, uh, an era of football here at BC where you can go into a game every Saturday and you know that you have a shot to win the game. And we proved that with a win over the at the time number nine USC. And so you know going in to the bowl game, coming in morning of December twenty seventh, I was feeling good, feeling confident. It's a game that we could you know we could easily take. And um, we were in it. We were in it the whole way. I, mean, I thought we deserved to win it. Yeah. Which, I truthfully, mean, I think we shot ourselves in the foot many a times. But yeah. overall, I thought we had a fantastic shot to win the entire game. I think we should have won that game right. despite what the crowd was there because it was literally 75-25. Right. Oh, was... with, with good respect, though, because Penn yeah. State is a, a school of over 100,000. Right, school, much larger school, a much more bowl-starved and Especially school. in the area, too, of New York, where, right. you know, the New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania area, which we dominate, too, but Penn State's on such a bigger scale, a larger scale, that it wasn't too surprising to see them come in, you know, in hordes, so. Right. And it was good. I mean, like, I didn't mind the, the, the underdog, not underdog, but right. the atmosphere right. of being the, the visitor. It was nice. It was good. You know, you came in. I mean, we obviously had, um, I sat with you, we had some Penn State people in the section. It was nice to shut them up. And it was good, you know, jump out to the early lead up 21-7 at one point. And this is what I'll say. Throughout the season, different errors have come that have lost us games. I mean, obviously the kicking game is first and foremost and that reared its ugly head again. But other issues like dropped passes, poor decisions from Tyler Murphy, different skill issues or mental mistakes have come up. But the one thing that I have felt like the entire season... I could not attribute a loss to was the coaching. Mm -hmm. And as much as that kick, obviously, like it's an extra point, you have to hit it. It at least forces another overtime. I really do feel like this is the one time um, that that the coaching made the mistake and made the difference. I just, it, it amazes me how many games of football that I can watch in my lifetime and see a team 
up 14, decide yep. to play conservative. Yeah. I just don't understand it. Like, I, I don't understand how, as a college coach, as any coach, I mean, as a Pop Warner coach, how you could not see other teams do it. It happens so often. The second you take your foot off the gas pedal in a game you're leading, the second that you give the other team a breath of life, you've, you've already lost. It's true. And that, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. I was going to bring up the, I think the, the turning point of the game, which you just said, was when we were up 14, we just had the pass, I believe it was to Shaquem Phillips, in the mm-hmm. back of the end zone, great pass from Tyler Murphy, and then Hackenberg comes out, I think they went three and out, maybe they got one first down, they kick it to us, we have it within the 10. First play, John Hilleman runs for 13 yards, fantastic run up yeah. the middle, fantastic run, called back. Holding. So now we're on our own five. Maybe it would have been the three. We run it to the same exact play. I think we lost one. Then we do the same exact play next, run it straight up the middle. We gain two. So now it's, I don't know, third and 17. Yeah. And now we decide to run a option which worked basically 80% of the time in the game. And it gets us 13 yards. So now it's fourth and four. We punt. They get the ball on their 40. Suddenly they're on their 40 or they're on our 40. Too long for a field goal. They punt again. The same exact thing happens where we run the ball up the middle. We punt again. Eventually they're going to score. Right. I mean, that's kind of obvious. I was asking too much of the defense. I mean, like, yeah, we, we have a very good defense. Um, the defense, which got, I mean, in all all honesty though, it was destroyed strongly and often by, I think a subpar quarterback. I think I think our secondary played very poor. I, I don't know who to pinpoint exactly. I remember Justin Simmons getting burned a lot. He a played. Lot. He made one play. I mean, the first bomb that Hackenberg threw was uh, Manny Espria yeah. got tripped up and couldn't keep up with the guy. Simmons, the entire game, you know, yeah, he was ten yard like digs, five yard routes, slants. No, you know, nothing huge. He didn't get beat for, you know, a 20-yard pass. But he, when you add it up, he got beat so many times. And distinctly, I remember one was the only time he got the hand on the ball was a touchdown. Because he yeah. tipped it in the air yeah. and the guy caught it. That was the only time he actually kept up with the player. And he, did he do the good thing? Yes. But he also tipped it straight up in the air, which is a big no-no for, I guess, you're giving somebody an option. So it's it's... It's good that you got the hand on the ball, but you're supposed to bat it down, not up. That was that was the one thing I know spur of the moment coming fast. It's a reaction, but right, and it I mean, costs like, us a touchdown. Yeah, even if you're not going to fault him for that, even if you're going to say, right. like, yeah, that, it was That, that may have been his that, best play, yeah, too, that, which that, is kind of sad. Yeah, it was a good play, but, right. I mean, at the, at the end of the day... He's going to be our leader good. next year. He's going to be good, right. but this game he just got absolutely smoked. And I didn't yeah. see that throughout this entire season. Our secondary has been a problem. I yeah. think our D line was fantastic against the run. Penn State did not run no, us they at didn't. all. It's true. We ran all over Penn State, which was supposed to be the number one rushing defense in the country. So, right. for to have our entire running back crew coming back next year, I am so excited. The only yeah. problem is if you can find a defense that can match that, what do we do? Do you put trust in Darius Wade type thing? Because we didn't have any trust in Tyler Murphy in this no. game, and Tyler Murphy. I mean, was he very conservative? Yes, but that's how he plays when he throws. Right. I mean, he he but, had some he had some nice shots. Oh, there fantastic! Were a in the game. I feel like we pulled the reins on him though. I feel like those two drives where we ended up punting, you easily could have let him throw. I think he right. maybe threw one out of six plays. Right, and, and that's he didn't, well, if we can, there was not one ball that entire game that was close to being picked. That's another thing. That's and true. That's true. He we did not make any once. mistakes in that game. That's for sure. And Why wouldn't you let him throw more? I don't understand it. And going going back to that drive where I know, thought it was locked it three times. I thought the game was locked at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, up twenty one seven, we had all the momentum, and then they go three and out, or like you said, may, maybe a first down, and got the ball right back. Now, I'm sorry, like, and I said this before the drive. I said we're down at our own ten to start. We're not. We're not a team that's built to drive ninety yards unless. We, you know, get a first down, two first downs, get, like, maybe you're on the 30, 40-yard line, and Hilleman breaks one, then, like, that's the chance. But we're not a team, we're not an offense that was built throughout the year to have these big, long drives. No. We no. were a big play offense. Right. And, and that's just the way it was, and it worked, and it worked in the game. Now, you can argue that, like, throughout the season, there was a lot of not passing on first and second down, waiting... 
waiting until third down and that you want to stick to your game plan in a bowl game, and that's fine. And and you can also say, yeah, you know, backed up inside the 10, you do need to be a little bit conservative, for sure. But you also have to understand that you need to flip the field. Oh, yeah. From that point on in the game, their starting field position was incredible. It had to have averaged at the 45. Yeah. And, and Howell and, was, and he was kicking good kicks. Too. He was, for he was sure. punting solid, average college kicker kicks. You know, he wasn't doing what the kid from Alabama did, where he got no, inside yeah. the five every time. Though he has done that this year. But when you put somebody in their own end zone punting out, he did a fantastic job with yeah. that. But they didn't flip the field. No, ever. they didn't. Not once. And and you just can't keep giving it to him there because I mean, it's like three first downs, if that. If that, and you're in field goal range. Sure. I mean, and I mean, obviously they didn't beat us on field goals, but it's just any short field to work with, it just spells disaster, mm-hmm. and that's what it did. And you know, we we let them back in the game, and right. like I started this off with, I think that was one of the few times, yeah. the only time, honestly, this season I can say I think that game was lost on the coaching. I think every- I I agree with you, and I was I was going to bring it up too to blame. I mean, we. We, the first thing we did this offseason is we got a new special teams coach. That's official. Yep. We, he's from Florida. Um, so, I mean, Florida hasn't been that great over the years. No. But, but he's he's someone who's been with Adazio before, someone Adazio yeah. trusts. And it's going to be a lot better than whoever we had this year because, honestly, I couldn't even tell you. No. Couldn't even tell you who our special teams coach is. And he's going to put his sole dedication into that special uh, into the special teams unit. I think he has one more job, maybe linebackers or something like that. But – that special teams, I mean, special teams is something that's going to win or lose you a game, that's just true. like any other category. But special teams is so huge. It's true. When it comes you down, see, you got to have a good punter, a good kicker. Right. You see people make careers off it, like Les Miles. He's the, he's one of the best college coaches because his special teams is consistently one of the best in the country. And you know what? This new special teams coach is great, but honestly, I need a task force scouring the country and finding me a kicker. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, it's it's pressure that I can't imagine. Okay. You've got the weight yeah. of your own school, your whole school, down on you. You're in overtime in the Pinstripe Bowl in Yankee Stadium. Yeah. A fantastic venue, by the way. I just slipped that in there. It was it was awesome. The game I enjoyed was great. it. I mean, I think there could have been. I mean, there's better places oh, for, to watch college football. Obviously, but yes, for doing but a good job up in this well. area, fantastic. But I just I don't understand. It, there there have to be people out there where. I mean, long field goals, sure, there's pressure with that. But an extra point that needs to be rote memorization. The, the, the fact that there isn't a kicker out there that we could have found, I mean, honestly, a kicker on this campus that we could have found, that, that extra points was just muscle memory, pure rote memorization. Yeah. There has to be a person like that out there. I refuse yeah. to believe that we could not find somebody who could do that job, who could hit that field goal. And, I mean, and the, the worst part about it was – Knowing that as soon as he missed that, regardless of of how it happened, that was it. Overtime yeah. was over. And the I next had to series. watch Penn State score. Yeah, and also Penn State started off that final drive. I believe it was a false start, and yeah. then a gain of nothing. Yeah, and then another, third. and then like an incomplete pass. It was like third and twenty, and they got it because we played conservative, yeah. prevent D. You can't play but, prevent D from thirty <laughs> yards in. 30, it's just I mean, not. He, here's where I'll I talk about. It. I don't. I mean. Was the game lost by the kicker? Yes. You can say that. You can say that. There's tons of other... First of all, we shouldn't ever... We shouldn't have been in overtime. That's first. No. But if you're going to look at it, and the way everybody looks at it, is we need a new kicker. Here's my opinion on it. I think Mike Knoll is a fantastic kicker. I think he is personally. This year, he missed two extra points. One coming in Clemson, which ended up costing us the game, and one coming in um, the pinstripe bowl. Those are the two kicks he missed. He missed, I believe, one field goal, and that was Syracuse, like a chip shot from like 30. So obviously he's had his struggles. He's also a true freshman, which is tough. Mm -hmm. He was one of the best recruits coming out of high school. I believe he's from the Ohio area. And I do have a lot of trust in him. I'll be honest. He's going to be our kicker next year, and I'm okay with that. The problem was he came into a scenario where we have four kickers in the program, I believe. Mm -hmm. Alex Howell was the first who was our long-distance guy, in the beginning our only guy. And then they had Joey Lonsford doing PATs. Howell became such a good punter and missed a couple field goals here and there that they were like, you know what, Howell, let's just give you punting. You focus on that, and we'll bring in 
somebody else that, that can do the job. So they started with Lonsford, who actually went 100% in his field goal percentage here at Boston College as he is graduating in the spring. He went 100% from field goal and 67 from PAT land, which is just, uh, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. It's, and if I'm a Dazio, yeah. there's nothing you can do. In the end, we ended up missing seven PATs, maybe eight, eight. eight, eight PATs. Eight. I believe it was four coming from the foot of Lonsford, two from Howell, and two from Noel, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's the, t- the uh, statistics. Yeah, I think you're correct with that. It's... It's unfortunate, and luckily, I mean, Howell's coming back next year, so he's going to be our punter, which is nice. Yeah. Noel is going to be our kicker, and I think something that, if you want to look at all the different things that happen in the pinstripe ball, I'll break it down, and I'm not making excuses for him. Should he have, kicked, should he have hit the PAT? Yes. <laughs> There's your answer. I completely agree with you. You cannot miss a PAT. Yeah. It's your job. That's what you're here for. There there are many things that, that cause him to be in that spot. I would, if I was... A Boston College fan, I'd love to have. I mean, I want Noel out there. I thought Noel should have kicked it in the in, in the, the Florida, Florida State, State game, game yeah. to be honest. So there's a lot of trust you put behind him. It didn't really make sense to me why he wasn't out there kicking the Florida State game. But first of all, Yankee Stadium turf was garbage. It wasn't turf. So yeah. people are saying he slipped. I didn't really see much, to be honest. I mean, I'd there love were, to get a video of it. I haven't watched I, I it. I did watch it. Did you? And I've watched it a few times. And I do. I see a minute slip, which, I mean, I don't think could have thrown off a kick that bad. Because it was bad. And it honestly, was, he, from, our seats, from our seats, I thought it was in. Yeah. yeah. I mean, from, from where we were sitting, I thought it was a perfect field goal. Which, which obviously upset me when I heard the other right, side of the stadium You didn't know roar. until, yeah, yeah. you saw, heard everybody so, around you screaming. So that's first. The, the grass was rough. Second, Tyler Murphy, which I didn't think about. I read it in an article, actually, Boston College Interruption, which is one of my favorite sites here. Tyler Murphy has been holding the ball this entire year from the position of a righty because all of his kickers have been righties except for the nth amount of times that Noel has been out there. So that's maybe what, at the most, at the least, eight Ten times he's held yeah. the ball for no. I mean, not counting practice. Also, the snap wasn't fantastic, but I mean, it was it was still a snap that easily could have been a field goal. And no hit a field goal earlier too, which is the the astounding part. But so I think maybe it was. I mean, everything was there, and it looked like it could have been there. It was just shanked so bad. Yeah. And you want to make excuses saying, well, Murphy had to catch it with the opposite hand. Because if you imagine being a lefty and being on this side, you have to spin it with your left now and hold it back in your right, as opposed to being more natural and spinning it with your right being a righty. Which bodes great for next year because Darius Wade is a lefty. Mike Knoll's a lefty. So he should never have problem getting the ball down. I mean, that's... These are all making excuses, and yeah. we really don't know. There's many things that went into it. He should have kicked the extra point, yes. Is it the main reason we lost the game? No. It's unfortunately for him, he got all the blame. Because, yeah. I mean, honestly, if we keep going into OT with Penn State, I don't know if we win. No, I think we got no, lucky and we true. scored. That's true, yeah. Penn State would have scored. We would have went into another OT or, you know, a sudden death type of situation I mean, okay, where I we, we luckily scored an OT. Who is to say... Who is to say that we do, in fact, it's all let Penn State I mean, score there? I just don't... I think that... If you if you have that seven point cushion instead of the six, like they, the defense went out there knowing it was ending on that possession, so either they were going to make the play or they weren't going to. And they make were. The play. I mean, everybody if was you, fired up. The right. entire, I've never seen the the whole team be so together since USC. Right. You know, they're all on the bench screaming, getting us up, and it was just that it was that play that third and twenty or right. third and seventeen. Yeah, if you that have just a third and sucked the life out of everybody. And I and saw it from. Not, I mean, if you're like, for example, I'll bring up John Hillman. John Hillman played the game of his life. Had brought the team on his back, yeah. ran for over 150 yards, whatever it was, maybe more, two touchdowns, just absolute monster runs against the number one, as a true freshman, the number one defense in the country. Yeah. Is he the best running back in the country? No. no. But he could easily become it and become the next Andre Williams. And he's only a freshman. He earned third team, all ACC. He's got so much potential. And just you know, to see him willing on the fans to get this win, you know, it, it's – it's rough for him being, yeah. you know, the Rutgers commit that he was, and then and then coming out and seeing 
that Rutgers team go out and crush a uh, an uh, North Carolina team and whatever it was the 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 Detroit nobody gives a blank bowl, but it's it's rough for him not to get that win, especially in an area where he grew up right next to me in Plainfield, New Jersey. So um, it was like tough like that. Like that is not the way you want to lose is on an extra point. No. But you should not have been there to begin with. But yeah. I guess that that's the whole thing is we should not have been in that position. And it's right. a shame that Noel gets the blame. It really is because it is. it's not My- his fault. There are tons of – I mean, is it his fault – Yes, he missed the PAT. Yeah, should he have put put in that position? No, I mean that's no. that's obvious. And I will but say that, he should have hit it. My point but. with it was that although he shouldn't have been put in that position, I think that he then by missing that forces um, Adazio's hand. And we talked about earlier how ridiculous it was with third and seventeen. You're going to put a prevent D on, but at the same time, if you hit that, if you hit that extra point. You have the seven point cushion. Yeah. So you know a, there, it's a that, different mindset. You're yeah, right. it is. You can press the issue. You don't have to play prevent because if they score, you can still go into another overtime. So you can add a little pressure. You can throw a blitz. You can play up on the receivers. You don't have to play prevent D on third and seventeen if he hits that PAT. But I think that yeah, you said it. Yeah. We've kind of gone ad nauseum with this game. Uh, the gist of it is Boston College loses in the Pinstripe Bowl by a point. Definitely unfortunate. Um, good things to come, though, for the BC football team, it looks like. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We have our entire running back crew coming back, which I love. We're going to have a new quarterback at the helm, which is in, in, and with a whole new offensive line coming in, too, it's going to be tough. Oh, it's going to be tough. If you don't mind, this is just a point that Go I had thought of earlier and, and lost track of. Um, why? And maybe you can shed light on this for me because I just don't understand it. I've thought about it all season. Why is our starting quarterback holding the kicks? That's just. Such... I think it's more of a veteran thing. I, um, I get ma- that. Ma- I mean, like, many many teams do do it. I know, and I've just never understood it for yeah. any team. It just seems like I mean, it is, not a, it is a like weird a risk. thing to do. I mean, it's you can't like... have someone on a team that's like a. I mean, there are, there are teams that have designated holders. It's kind of like they're the the third string punter or whatever or yeah, whatever or even, you hold. I, I understand the the idea of having a quarterback just just for the <laughs> opportunity that there's always the possibility of trickery. Yeah, throwing, but yeah. I mean like if you look at maybe, a team maybe, like yeah. Oregon who has, has consistently proved to be the best with, they put with their mixing back it up in. on their on their kicks. Yeah. They they have their third string quarterback in doing okay. it. It's third always string. a third string. But like it's still you'd like to think that at a college program, the third a, a D one college program the, the, the yeah the, the third so what's the difference? You're saying like what's the difference between Wade and, and right, and especially with Noel being a lefty, maybe. Right. I mean, yeah. I guess maybe Adazio's trust with Murphy. Yeah, being I mean, a like fifth I, year holding the ball. He, did, I mean, he didn't right. botch a snap this entire year. So no, he didn't. No, you, Murphy, yeah, it was but, obviously no, it was exactly, fine. I just exactly. don't understand the choice. Um, I, I feel like you can yeah. find somebody to do that job. Like I don't. Think I that. feel like you easily could have put Wade in that situation, yeah. and I mean, I I, don't I, think it I guess the I'm outcome. assuming that Wade's going to be our holder next year. I don't know though because he's going to be our starter as of right now. We have two new recruits coming in. That's going to be they're going to be true freshman quarterbacks. And then we have Troy Flutie, who I don't even know is going to be. In, I mean, right now he's our backup, but I've heard talks of converting him to wide receiver. Yeah. Talks of you know getting him, you know, bulking him up and. Need moving wherever, up. so yeah, he needs to bulk up, but um, a lot of potential there, I mean, yeah, had good high school statistics, but I've seen Darius Wade's highlight tapes and stuff too, he he can run, he has a he has an arm, so. Yeah, I mean, alright, like, I come, <coughs> come from Troy's area, I mean, I, I right. am from Troy's rival town, uh, didn't go to their high school, but went to all the games between the two high schools, it's, I mean... The competition is is different. Oh, understandably. Like Troy, and, and Troy was for Massachusetts high school football. Troy shined. There's yeah. no doubt about that. that that's that's but, the tough like, part. It's, he's, it's a different competition. That's the tough part about being a school in this area, because I feel like you got to have some type of like direct connection. Adazio has to build a connection because you cannot rely on Massachusetts recruits. Well, this is a good point, though. With Massachusetts recruits, the number two kicking recruit in the country is from Massachusetts. It's from Milton Academy. Number two kicking recruit in the country and is not coming here. Is going to Notre Dame Dame, or rival school. Yeah, no, I did know that. Because they have, I mean, they have gotten tons of players from from Massachusetts all the time. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, we have three of the top five their, in Massachusetts. They're, they're number one. I mean, obviously, I know because my brother goes to Notre Dame. 
their number one pitcher, who is going to play for the Orioles organization, and also their star on the basketball team, the player of Massachusetts, Pat yep. Connaughton, is an absolute stud out there. Imagine having him here. He would turn this. He would help turn this program around right. this year, being a senior star. So why can't I, I mean Notre Dame? They have the name over us, I guess. Right. With sporting, I mean, I mean, there is obviously the old you know adage: you can't win them all, and that's yeah. for sure. Oh, I but mean, you I mean, have to do something about when it. When you have a star like that, yeah. you just you gotta you gotta. Somehow it's the same pull thing it with like Rutgers. Rutgers has a a strange, and I don't know how they established it, a strange pipeline with Florida. <coughs> so, what happens is Rutgers has like it's their entire. Starting lineup in a, in a football game, they'll be like, you know, quarterback, New Jersey, running back, New Jersey, O-lineman, Florida, O-lineman, New Jersey, O-lineman, Florida. It's like New Jersey and Florida, and that's it. It's like the strangest thing because they have a pipeline where they get kids from the same high school, they get kids from the same area that are coming up to play in this program because they trust and they have friends up here. And that's what they need to start. What you just did, you just booked, right now, you have three starters from St. Peter's High School in New Jersey. New Jersey's probably... Ooh, when I talk about high school football standards, it has to be top five. It's New there, Jersey yeah. has some studs. You got Hilleman from St. Peter's Prep, Kalanen, who's going to be our number one receiver next year from St. Peter's Prep, and then I think it's Mike Giancone or something like that. Uh, I think he was our backup tight end this year, but he may move into a more uh, prominent role with Bordner leaving. Uh, all from St. Peter's Prep. And the number one quarterback in New Jersey this year, Brandon Win- Wimbush, is going to... Notre Dame from St. Peter's Prep, and he's an absolute star. I've seen, you know, how you don't, I I don't know how to explain it, how you cannot, you have to get recruits. How do you and, not send Hilleman down there over a break and be like, Hilleman, we, we need this guy, you get it. Exactly. I mean, Wimbush was, was locked way before that. Right, but, yeah. But no, and, and that was probably before Hilleman, you know, believed in the program. I don't even know if he still does. I mean, he's still here, but... Um, it's just we have to establish something in some area. I mean, Adazio himself is a Florida guy. Mm-hmm. How you don't have some type of connection in Florida, I'm not understanding. And Florida is a great high school football state area. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's an interesting thing. I mean, if we're going to get off on this tangent, we could easily pull up BC's recruits. It's like this class is just not – I mean, it's the a good is, too, class. The thing is, too, which kind of bums me out is – all of our recruits that I look at, like I was looking at, I think it was our class, so the class 2018, like who they got offers from. Not to knock it and everything, but if you want to look at, oof, here's a guy, Wyatt. Wyatt's yeah. from, Florida. from Florida. So there yeah. you go. So maybe they do I mean, have, maybe yeah, they're we starting. Have one ESPN I mean, 300 commit. We have one kid who's rated by ESPN. The, the guard, four stars. Right? Yeah. I mean, we have, we have, it looks like we have some good um, offensive linemen coming in. You know, we have the 25th dual threat quarterback coming in. He's from Florida, too. Is that Smith? Oh, yeah. I've yeah. heard a lot about Smith. So, it's... It's it's not so much area in my mind. It's just getting over that hill. I mean, one four-star recruit, that's great. Yeah. That's great. No, no, yeah, Steve no, Adazio, no, this is where... It's yeah, a big-time coach. This is what I was about, coach. yeah. I lost at, my train of thought, but now I remember. Yeah, yeah. At, at this point, you need, you need a few more four-star. If you want to look at who was our stars this year, John Hilleman was probably the only one... That was recruited by another top school, which is which is strange. If you want to look at, let's use Sherman Alston for example. He, the only Division One school he was recruited by is us, which is interesting. Yeah. This guy Wyatt, yeah, his recruit. number two school looks like Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky, Kentucky is the and- worst team in the SEC, to be honest. I mean, maybe Vanderbilt can beat them out, but um, and, then, and, then and then Miami. So Miami's like that's that's something that. At least I'm looking forward to it a little bit. But like Troy Flutie, for example, it was Boston College was the only Division One school that offered him. I mean, you want to look at this guy? It's a we're com- UConn. It's a lot of people Maryland, that we're competing with. It's like this. This. It's always been this area of Boston College, Maryland, Penn right. State, Rutgers, which are the run of the mill teams in their league. I want to be competing against, you know, the top SEC teams for these kids because they want to stay either close to home or they're in their area or bring something back. But I guess you can't get that if you're not successful. I, The thing that kills me, the pinstripe bowl was such a big game to get recruits. Oh, you could have dominated this area. You bring all, you know, you bring all your New Jersey kids in that are juniors in high school. You bring all your New York kids down. You have the Massachusetts ones come down, whatever lick of them there are. 
And then you start bringing kids up too. You have people watching this game and it's just to lose on an extra point like that. It's just like, why am I going to come to this school and why am I going to do this and that? And why am I going to, to lose on an extra point? It just kills me. That that's, that's what kills me. And you got to have these, and you're doing it with kids who are getting recruited by one D one school or two D one schools. It's kind of, it's kind of a bummer. And I don't, I mean, you can see why, People would choose other schools over Boston College, you know, more perks, we may be a tougher school, bigger stadium, bigger fan base, different areas, different weather conditions. There's a lot of things that go against us, but the people who come here, it's, it basically comes down to wins. And because we haven't been a good program over the past six years, and now we're starting to turn it around, and we've had two straight winning seasons, I don't see why we can't have another winning season next year with the people that we're playing. If you get the lock-in wins, like, you know, there's no reason Wake Forest should be better than us. There's no reason Virginia Tech should be better than us. Virginia Tech used to be a prominent program. If you want to talk about prominent programs that have really, you know, bit the dust, Virginia Tech is one that's fallen very fast, even though they won their, their bowl game over Cincinnati. So that helps them, and they play in a pretty solid area in Blacksburg. So overall, I'm just I'm looking forward to – Kind of not not revamping the team because we have a lot of people coming back, which I'm excited for, but kind of just like I don't know, shocking the world type thing. And I think we'll do it once over these four years. I think this year could have been easier to do it. I wish we had Murphy for one more because that would be fantastic. Yeah. I think he'd be great, but I think it's time to get Wade situated. I think he could I'd be like to see fantastic what this Jeff for Smith us. Can, but can Jeff on. Smith, I've heard very great things about. Yeah. I mean. I don't know how much faith I have in Flutie. I hope he's fantastic, but mm. I mean, unless you have a two quarterback system next year, I don't think he's going to sniff the field unless Wade just completely collapses. But um, yeah, I guess we'll have to see really how it goes and and how we're looking at next year because next year our home games, which are games we can all win: Wake Forest, NC State, um, New Mexico State. Over there, Maine. I don't know why we have Maine on there. It's I mean, just, there, there is just, like, you yeah. can pencil in wins. I mean, yeah. if we want to look at that schedule next year, I mean, I think that New Mexico State should be a win. NC State, New Mexico State, Virginia Tech, with the way that Virginia Tech played this right. year. Maine. Virginia Tech beat Ohio State. That's still not as possible. That's crazy. Well, no. Wake it, Forest. Was it Virginia Tech? Or, no, yeah, it was. Virginia it was. Tech beat Ohio State week two, or week one. I think it was one of the two, and then just went off. So that's yeah. four wins right there that I named. Syracuse, Syracuse should be a win. Should be a win. And then you have Clemson, Duke, Louisville, Northern Illinois, and Notre Dame, which are all toss-ups, and Florida State. And I think that's that was, what did I say, four or five guarantees right there. You yeah. need six to get into a bowl game. I think if we get to yeah. eight wins next year, which I think is I think it's possible. Yeah, easily. I think an eight wins. I mean, I think an eight-win season was possible this year. Oh. And I think oof. with a little bit of experience I think we losing those to, tough games. Easily got to got to nine. Yeah. I think that I think eight wins is a good target. You gotta learn how to start closing out games, and that's where these yeah. big recruits come into and leadership and stuff like right. that. I mean, the thing is, if that, you look, that's through, where we're gonna run the trouble next year. If though. you look through ESPN's history of since they've been documenting their recruiting stuff, we haven't had a recruit over an eighty ranking overall. You need to start bringing in consistent kids that are yeah. eighty. And start moving up to maybe having a high of an eighty-five. So right. like a little bit better. And how do you, the thing is, how do you bring those kids in? You gotta win. It comes you got to win. It, it comes down to team. winning. It's the yeah. same thing with our basketball team. You got to win. Yeah. How do you bring kids? You know, how do you how do you pack the stadium more? Win. Yeah. How how do you how do you pack the arena more? Win. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. You can you can say whatever you want. You can give whatever perks you want. But if you don't win, why are people going to play? Why why do they want to play for you? Yeah. And I think I think we had a, a a fantastic year this year. I'm not gonna. I no. I was very pleased with it. For sure. Keeps going dead. But overall, I think we could have been better. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on now to national championship game talk. Obviously, we had a long break, so a lot happened. The first playoff rankings came out, or the first yep. final playoff rankings came out. Um, and, I mean, this is just a, a brief interlude before we get into it, and I'll speak to it. I think that, I mean, it obviously they proved me wrong, and the... Ohio State, who I a lot said, of people I think said I shouldn't have gotten I think in. Both of us. I mean, uh, I know yeah. I said it very strongly. Like there yeah. is no way on God's green earth that Ohio State is sniffing this Final Four. Yep. I end up winning it. 
Yeah. But. Um, I just, I still, like, obviously, like I said, prove me wrong, Ohio State ended up winning. I think it was ridiculous TCU did not get that into is that tough. Final Four. That, the way that they got I think that by, ousted. so, I mean, just a little review, obviously, it's a little far back. Um, Alabama was sitting at number one, Oregon was at number two, and then it was Florida State, no, TCU, TCU three, three, Florida State four, and then um, Baylor five, Ohio State six. Yeah. I, uh, it blows my mind that TCU went out in one by 52 points. Obviously, Ohio State beat a better opponent by, by, 59. by 59. That's fine. But how does TCU drop three spots on a 52-point victory? Baylor, I yes, and got ranked below Baylor. I mean, Who they beat. No, they lost to Baylor. They lost to Baylor. Lost Baylor, to Baylor. Was so, the Baylor lost to West Virginia. Or that's like that. fine. Yeah. Oh, you're right. So that doesn't make sense either. But that's fine. But it, it, I mean, like, I understand the politics of them needing to be ranked below Baylor right. because Baylor beat them and it's a head to head. Right. But just by the eye test, you, me, anybody who watched both of their bowl games, you, know you can tell that TCU was the better team. Oh, yeah. And TCU went out there and romped. Right. And if you're going to say that Ohio State had that one bad night but got in, well, TCU had that one bad night to Baylor and should and have that's been That's a in. lot better than Virginia Tech. Right. Exactly. So I was just disappointed that with the fact that TCU didn't get in. I, I feel personally like the college football playoff committee shot themselves in the foot and completely just devalued every other ranking that they came out with before that. They, they said, okay, well, the final ranking is the only one that matters, and don't get set on what we've shown you before because we're liable to just just send it to the crapper. I, I just thought it was ridiculous that TCU didn't get the bid. I was so ecstatic to see them come out and just absolutely destroy um, Ole, Miss. Ole Miss. It was great. They went out there, and they proved that they had deserved to be in it. They yeah. should have been in it. Oh, yeah. And honestly, should have been in it over Florida State. Obviously, couldn't have taken a you can't, undefeated yeah. team out. It's but tough. Florida State... And oh yeah, Florida State was right definitely the, the weekest yeah the playoff opponent top. in there. So we'll start Oregon, they got Florida State, railed. Oregon. I mean, to see Ohio State beat Oregon so bad, and think about how bad Oregon State. I mean, Oregon beat Florida State. It's just like how how was Florida State even uh, there? Maybe I mean it could have been a just a rough game, for Florida State. But their entire year was win on. I mean, we've been saying it, luck, complete luck, and in, in in big game situations at the end, you know, they would a big defensive stand or. You know, eventually their luck was going to run out when they played an actually good team. So. Yeah, I mean, like, that was a predictable <coughs> game. I still didn't think that they were going to get blown out the way no. they did. Oh, goodness. The, the turnover bug just hit them hard. Like, four straight oh, yeah. possessions. And they were playing. James Winston facing a, was the most ridiculous uh, yeah. fumble I've ever seen. That uh, was hilarious. Uh, like, Cardell did the same thing the next yeah, day. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Did, I don't know. Did Cardell? Up, oof. I'm looking up. Cardell was making his draft decision today. I'm curious. Yeah. Mariota officially is going to the draft. Mariota is officially going. Sad day for Oregon fans. Yeah, you're. Um, Oregon, yeah. I mean, hopefully, I'm. I am just praying that he goes to the Bucks. If he like, if he goes anywhere, if he ever ended up in New York, I don't know what I'd do with myself. I, I mean, I, I I intend to stay true to Mariota, but oh man, if he was ever in conference with the Jets, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do no, it. No, he didn't make his. He just said. He said he was going to make a decision at 4 p.m., and he didn't. So, Or not on Twitter, at least. Maybe he did to the media. But um, I guess looking back at it, I do agree with you with the whole TCU thing. TCU should have, should have been stayed in, and I think Ohio State should have jumped um, Baylor for number five. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think Ohio State did anything to deserve that fifth spot. No, yes, they won like, by obviously. 59. That's great. But uh, a lot of people are saying that, I mean, Wisconsin threw that game. I mean, that's, that's a little... Strong, but I mean, for Wisconsin and Melvin Gordon to score zero points, it's, it's very hard. hard to believe. That's and I think hard. you're doing it for the conference. Now your conference looks fantastic. Imagine all the recruits that want to come for Jimmy Harbaugh now, and yeah, you know, Ohio State, and all those teams to play them. You know, somebody who got recruited by just say Wisconsin and a run of the mill SEC team. Cardell Jones oh, is staying. At Ohio staying. State. There you go. Thirty minutes ago. Um, so there you go, Cardell's staying for another year. So yeah, we'll talk about the quarterback situation. Yeah, there. JT will be thrilled. Um, <laughs> overall, I guess we could talk about this for like five more minutes since we have yeah. NFL next. But overall, it, it does stink that TCU got ousted. It's not really fair for them, and I, and I don't think Ohio State justified. 
Honestly, though, if we're going to go back to blaming one thing, it's really the Big 12. The yeah, Big 12 God, not God having a that. championship game. Overall, you want to take out championship games altogether? Good. Do that. It's just a moneymaker. That's what a yeah, championship but, game is. I mean, is. you're a Power 5 conference. But you need to conform to the rest of the Power 5 conferences. There are if everybody's having a championship game and you you're not, get on board. then yes, Ohio State did have an advantage in getting over over you. Right. I get so, that. So this is, this is my thing, then. One it is the Big champion. 12's fault. That yeah. TCU is Absolutely. not they in Absolutely. They shot there. themselves in the foot and could have had their team possibly. They were probably the best team in there. So was Ohio just... State Ohio State gets the assist in all of this oh, yeah. from the Big 12. Obviously, you know, they went out, beat TCU, Alabama. TCU, Oregon would have been an amazing game. It would have. Um, Actually, no, they would have jumped. Well, they may have, no, they probably would have stayed three, so they would have played Oregon. And yeah. then it would have been Florida State and Alabama, right. a game of nobody cares. And would have went. I think we went into that. Oh yeah, yeah that would have been a very I mean, but interesting that's, game. Yeah, but that's regardless. Points. Yeah, regardless. Moving in, um, I've said it before. I mean, I've been thinking it, but it's tough to come out and say it since it was like you know Ohio State all had this controversy over the past few years, and you know they lose to Virginia Tech and they just play. I, I'm honestly, I think the Big Ten is one of the most overrated conferences. To yeah. be honest, yes. I mean, sure they have good teams, but you know. Y- I mean, if you want to talk about good teams this year, they had uh, Michigan State, Michigan, yeah, Wisconsin, and Ohio State. And Ohio State. That's, that's it. it. That's it. And, There's and, no one that even comes close after that. I mean, you want to compare that to the ACC, you could say Florida State. You have Florida State, Clemson. who got crushed, Clemson, yeah, that's true, and then Louisville. So it's like we're kind of stacking up against them. I'm not saying we're better than them. I'm not saying we're worse than them, but. I just think it's Top not. Bottom, I don't think it's that better. great I, of a That's conference. the thing. I mean, the Big Ten has some like a really rough bottom. Oh yeah, they have a rough bottom. I, I mean, mean, our like bottom is Maryland, not Maryland, Rutgers, but Maryland, Rutgers, is, Purdue. Uh, yeah, just a Northwestern, rough like you yeah. know, Illinois, Indiana. Oh, I'm not even thinking about the bad teams yet. Um, Indiana wasn't bad this year. They weren't too bad. They're just yeah. They they're had, never uh, they're never thing, in but, contention though. No. Yeah. Yeah, they had the running back, but going into that game, I. Going to my point, Urban Meyer is one of the best coaches I've ever seen. Um, he's you know he's done some questionable things over his coaching. People have had their doubts about him. They haven't respected him, stuff like that. But talk about coaching. I mean, we look. I look at Urban Meyer the same way I look at Belichick. Do I like the guy? Not really. But he is just so darn smart. Mm-hmm. It's just unbelievable things he does. His coaching is fantastic. It's out of this world. Just his decision making. How you have a third-string recruit or a third-string quarterback win you a national championship, how you go through three quarterbacks, I mean, I have no idea. Oh, great I have point. no You're idea. From roommate. Georgia Tech was another good ACC team oh, this year. Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, Georgia Tech was a fantastic team. That yeah. was very good. Yeah. Um, so that puts us ahead of the Big Ten. So take there everything <laughs> back. We're better. But no, but Urban Meyer – Georgia Tech, his... that's a team to watch out for. Yeah, too. it is. A lot of Urban Meyer, I mean, he's a great coach, but when you look at great coaches in, in college football, it's the great recruiters that are also the great coaches. Oof, yeah. Nick Saban, I mean, Nick Saban's job is is easier on the field than more, most any college coach because of how good he does, or how well he does with recruiting. Oh, he yeah. consistently has the top class, yeah. or, or up there, in, in top five. He's never outside the top five. Never. He's just bringing in top players after top players, Yeah. and, you know, it, it's an easy job for him. Oh, it's fantastic. And right. you have other people like, I mean, if you want to talk about teams to watch out for for next year, um, like recruiting-wise, LSU and their running back, I mm. believe it's Fournette. Fournette. Leonard Fournette. Oof. He's incredible. Out, he is going Just to be, as a, he was a true freshman this year. Mm-hmm. Um, watch out. He'll be a Heisman next year. Guaranteed watch, Heisman watch. Uh, probably top three. Yeah. Um, but LSU is a team that like had a subpar year. Yeah, could have easily beaten Alabama in that one game where they kicked it out of bounds in the final with the, minute. With the, yeah, that's same. typical Les Miles, but just being you know crazy. But interesting that he would be the one to lose on a on special teams. Thing. Yeah, but that's one team that I just I guess they just no matter what they do they could go they could go four and four in a million and they'll still get the top recruits in the southern area. It's just it's, true. it's just where they're this is where I think area does come into play. I yeah. think they just have so much more to offer than, you know, coming up here just because of I guess the conditions, who they play. And the stadium. It's just oh my god. The environment. Yeah, well, the problem is if we had a stadium like that we could well, we wouldn't we would sell half of it. That's not true. even oh, that's it true. would just be embarrassing to look at, which is just it's it's just because of its it's the area. Co- college Honestly, sports though, aren't I mean, big in this area. There's gotta be a bigger happy. I wish, for yeah, I know. How much I wish 
I I'm grew like the way that where I grew up in New Jersey. I mean, same for you here. College sports, like I, when I was growing up, I didn't have a college football team. Like I always semi adopted Rutgers just because even Rutgers team isn't that big, but that's who I adopted because I didn't know. I was like, I don't know. My dad went to Seton Hall. Didn't have a football team. Mom had a Moravian. That's a D three football team, so I didn't really support them. But so I didn't have any team that I'd really watch. I would just do it based on coolest mascot being a cool kid. So you know, I think I picked you know Wisconsin had one year because I love the Badger, and then Ohio State had a year. I remember maybe Alabama even had a year. I just like I just I don't even really care was, if you were cool. I would root for you. So the the first team I liked was Notre Dame because my brother went there. And then adopting a team and actually having a team, it's just like I've never worshipped a team that it was just like in this area, when you're born, it's like pro sports and that's it. It's like you never look at a college I mean, and team. We're, and we're spoiled with pro sports. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, up in this area, but it's, if you it's add Boston pro sports. Here, yeah. I mean, like, it, it would be fantastic. The it. problem is I, I, I don't know if there is. That's the thing. I feel like the market's there. Like the people are there. Believe me, the people, diehard fanatics are there. But a college market just isn't plausible well, I mean, I here, think which that, stinks. I, I don't know. I think that Flutie proved that there was. I think that Matt Ryan proved that there was. Yeah, well, they, yeah they come out when you're good. Yes, I, mean, yes. I think that's the run that's of the mill sure. There are not going to be the diehard... Oh, okay, all right. Well, I don't <laughs> think there are the diehard fans like you're going to find down in the South. Okay. But people will come out of the creeks and crevices when the team is good. Yeah. And if you can find some longevity... Where you're a good team, yeah. If you can start maintaining right. eight win seasons, if for you're a long always in the top time, twenty-five, I think you'll sell out the stadium. Yeah, that's sure. the thing. You have to for be sure. in that area though, because you're not like Ann Arbor, Michigan, where you can go. What? Will they have four wins this year? Yeah, I think so. And you can sell out a hundred and ten thousand seat stadium because there's it's nothing incredible. else to do in Ann Arbor. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like that's people... the problem with the area. Yeah, that's the that's the overall area. Same thing with Notre Dame, South Bend. What else can you do in South Bend, Indiana? My brother would refute that on me, and he would give me a million things to do. But <laughs> and again, um, it's just when you have a city, it's tough. It's tough to, I guess, one hundred percent back a team. Like we'll bring Georgia Tech for example, who's in the heart of Atlanta. If Georgia Tech's not good, like they they haven't been good in the past up until this year, right. um, like they've been the average run of the mill team. They're not selling out the stadium. No. So that that's I guess that's no, the thing point. is the I area. think that BC is is in a good point um, right now. I'll say this: the Red Sox, um, the Red Sox are an on and off team. Yep. Um, so we'll see how they they do it this year. I, a I lot mean, of potential. Uh, not even the best psychic potential. could figure out yeah. how they're going to do. They could Pitching bust again. Figure out. But. Yeah, that's true. Patriots are gonna are still gonna be good until Brady's gone, yeah. and even after Brady's gone, there's the potential to be good as long as Belichick wants to stay around. Right. The Celtics right now are Oof. not good. Oof. The Bruins right now are slumping a bit. Yeah. The biggest issue for BC is having to climb over all of these good teams. Yeah. There aren't all of these good teams right now. It's true. There is a unique opportunity for them right now if they can start winning games, if they can piece together a five-year span where they start getting some top 25 rankings yep. where you could really establish a young fan base yep. and maintain it. Right. And I would love to see if it. you grew up in this area, I don't understand why you would be any other fan than Boston No, I College. mean, I was a BC fan. I, I went to like a, uh, did your, a game your, or two did your every parents year. Here? No, my parents okay. not That's what I was curious. Yeah, no. I mean, my dad, yeah. they're both from here. I mean, my dad grew up in Hyde Park, right in Boston. Yeah. Um, my mother grew outside of Boston. We, I mean, I came to a game or two a year, every year. Yeah, and that's all you need. Right. You it, just need those fan bases. That's yeah. what we have in, like, I have no connection to Rutgers at all, but I would always go to Rutgers games all the time. I'd be going with my friends to tailgates and, and going to the games. I had no affiliation with them. I had a jersey. It was just because it was cool. Looking back, it was like, you know, maybe not because it's Rutgers, but that that's something that New Jersey has. Everybody likes Rutgers because Rutgers, when I was growing up, had Ray Rice, and that was what set them over the edge. And they were in, oof, they were in one of the, they, at one point, they had to be, I think, nine in the nation. And it was just, it was out of this world. Greg Schiano and Chop and everything about Rutgers, and everybody was like, I want to be a Rutgers fan. So that's what you need. Right. You need to it's transcend a, this area. Sure, we're, we're a pro, New Jersey's a pro sport area, too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, off New York. we have everything. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and it's true, though. And we don't have college sports other than Rutgers. So when Rutgers hit the market, 
Rutgers, every time they'd be on ESPN, they'd show New York City. Rutgers isn't even close to New York City, but right. they would do I mean, it, it's, and that's yeah. the thing. So people in New York City would be like, Rutgers, that's cool. Like, I'll go for Rutgers, because who else do I have? Fordham? <laughs> Shout out. Um, but, yeah. yeah. That, I guess that's the overall... Yep. That's the overall scope, and I hope we can yep. we can right. pick that up. But. So a quick bridge, I guess, before we yep. get into the NFL. Uh, obviously, a little recap for the national championship game. Oregon went down. Ohio State beat them Oof. fairly soundly. Yep. I would say turning point in the game, at least for me, was pretty early on when you are up 7 nothing as Oregon. You yep. have a, a wide-open pass Ooh. down to the 20-yard I, I line. I distinctly remember this, yes. To uh, Dwayne Stanford and dropped it. Yep. Dropped it with nobody within 10 yards of him, maybe 15. Was Game. looking at almost a sure house call. Um, and the, and Oregon go came out down. fast, dude. They did. They I predicted down. Ohio State to win. And everybody was like, why? It's Oregon. Like, Oregon has to be... You know. I was cautiously think Like, I mean, as an Oregon fan, just watching them lose a series of big games over the few, yeah. uh, past few years. Yeah. I was kind of not expecting it, but it was definitely in the back of my mind. Sure. And they got slashed by the run defense. Incredible job by Ezekiel Elliott. Oof. Had a fantastic game. Oh, yeah. Cardell Jones. Uh, I'm not going to say he had a fantastic game. He had a good game. He had, he had uh, a good game for a third string, for run, a th- for a third string yeah, quarterback. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he made a couple of and key to mistakes. To beat Alabama that we didn't and Oregon week to week. Oregon didn't capitalize back to back weeks to beat Alabama and Oregon is just out of this world. Right. You beat the 1 2 as the four seed. So kudos to you, Ohio yeah. State. Yeah, great win. Yeah. Uh, you know, all the congrats, Urban Meyer, right. definitely showing you can do it in a market other than Florida. It's true. It was very impressive. So, sure. yeah. So now we'll move right into the pros. we got about 10 minutes left. We'll, I guess we'll start with the game that you want to talk about, which Absolutely. is the AFC Championship game. The Indianapolis Colts coming into Foxborough to play the New England Patriots on yep. Sunday night, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Okay, Sunday night. Um, I guess we'll start with the game they played once this year. And I think New England just absolutely destroyed them. Yeah. Uh, I distinctly remember watching it. It was a Sunday night game. 40-point game. Yep. It was... It's not going to be the same. I completely agree with you. And if I'm a Patriots fan, which I'm not, I'm a little nervous watching Indianapolis (laughs) go into... I think you... I mean, it's the Patriots. I know that. But Indianapolis to go into Denver... Which is not an easy place to play. You got the altitude problems. You got Peyton Manning. Sure, he didn't play up to his standards. Uh, yeah, but, played with a torn quad. True, it's true. But the way their defense played, the yeah. way that Andrew Luck played yeah. under pressure, I I think it's an area of concern. I would truthfully say, though, truthfully, I think New England is the hardest place to play behind behind Lambo. I'll stick with Lambo. Lambo, really, hardest. I. See, that's interesting. I, I would give it right now, Seattle, historically. Lambo, okay, yeah. But right now, I'd say Seattle. Yeah, Seattle is um, one of those. I think yeah. the three teams you have right now, I mean, I don't think Indianapolis is going to be that hard to play in. But if you want to name, like, top, I think Denver, New England, Seattle, Green Bay, and New Orleans are the top five. Yeah. Maybe Kansas City's up there, too. I've heard that's fantastic. But Yeah, it seems like um, Regardless, I mean, I guess I want to hear your take since, yeah. you know, I don't I don't know as much as you. But are, are, are you nervous? I would say that I am nervous because I'm not nervous. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you're that, too sure you're going to make this. You're too. Super yeah. Well. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, I. Would you rather play Peyton Manning? Um. Because if I was you, I said this. I said yes. See, it was a debate for me. I mean, yeah. Obviously, like I think that if he can, if he somehow pulled that out, um, I think he's he's like obviously he was playing with a torn quad. I think yep. we could have won that game, but at the same time. I, I, I think Indy was the easier game to play. I'm happy we're playing Indy, yep. but obviously, you know, if if Denver won that yep. game, I think we could have played them too. I do think if they're in the right mindset, they have a hist- uh, they have a history of losing games when they shouldn't lose games. Right. When you're absolutely now, sure. I mean, understandably, of course, because kind right. of well, one of those games where you come a lot in of and those you, games. Yeah. I mean, like not not to be like you know bragging about it or anything, but they've built a rapport where there are a lot of games that they're just expected to win. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's as, that's as, that's almost harder than being a team that's horrible that exactly. is expected to lose Oh, everything. yeah, it's one of the worst things is trying to live to a standard. Being number right. one team, everybody comes in week after week, I want to beat you, I want to beat you, I want right. to beat you. It's tough. Yeah. And so I would say this, I mean, I think it's a game we can win. Like I said, I'm nervous because I'm not really nervous. Um... But I think, yeah, I mean, I think that we can pull it out. No, I, I completely agree with you. I, I think, I, truthfully, I think you're going to win. I think New England's going to yeah. win. But I I would rather play Denver. And I think it's just because of the way Denver's played New England. 
I don't think Indianapolis I mean, I could be like better. I almost like play Denver because of the satisfaction of being beat. Uh, uh, that's also true. I think Andrew Luck's getting. I think Andrew Luck's a fantastic quarterback. Yeah. Do Do I think he's going to single handedly? Do Do I think, do I think at well, this that's point the thing, in his it's a single handedly? I don't know if he's going to do that because it's Andrew Luck. Right. He didn't was? do it. He didn't do it at home. But then again, this is a bigger stage, and the way that New England played against the Ravens, that's giving me a little apprehension too. See, I don't think it was that bad of a game. I just think I think Joe Flacco played, or the the team itself played out of its mind. I would say to that, I don't think that the Patriots had a bad game. I th- I mean, like at least for me, I can tell you that watching that game, I did not breathe for the three and a half hours yeah. that the game was being played. I wish I well, I actually missed it. I oh. watched I watched the final drive. That was it. Because I was at, See, the, BC, I was I was at the BC hockey get, game. I was interested to get your perspective. I was at the I BC think hockey from a game. Non Patriots yeah. fan. Yeah, I wish that I must have been seen a it. great I wish game. I would have seen it. I did watch the the later game. Okay. So. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I'll say this about the game. I don't think that the Patriots played a bad game. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, I th- yeah, I think they played a really good game. I think Baltimore gave them a lot to handle. Um, and they're just a team that traditionally has had our number uh, in sure. big occasions. Yeah. I will say that I think I think Revis had a really crappy call. And I think the set, so yeah, I'm just kind of getting into a random thought, but um, the secondary was the biggest issue there where they haven't been an issue prior to this in the season. And I think the issue there was Darrell Revis got two kind of really bad penalties. One of them is especially bad. The other one, like I can see that, but a pass interference call that Darrell Revis didn't get one all season. And yeah. it was a terrible call. And I think that when you see that, like, oh, you know, wow, our, our best corner has to do that. You know, like I'm going to have to yeah. start playing a little our games. Um, yeah, I think I think Joe Flacco had a great game. Um, I'm not going to take anything away from Baltimore, but I think that you know Belichick, the crafty fox that he is, yeah, no, with that Belichick, play yeah. that Harbaugh got frustrated with. I mean, have, have you seen the tape of that play? I haven't. It's it's really it was or maybe incredible. It, so you know they had four linemen on the line. Oh oh oh! When uh, the, the whole yeah, thing where oh okay the yeah, whole substitution so Harbaugh, scandal thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I've seen this. So I mean. You know, Harbaugh was complaining that right. we didn't identify everybody and and, yeah. and stuff like that. And if you watch the inside the NFL, I saw that it was fantastic, really well done, got everybody mic'd up. It's it's nice. Um, and Tom Brady giving the classic interview. Well, I mean, like, I guess they just need to need to yeah. know the rules better. I think the Patriots did what they needed to do to win. I think they played a good game. I think they they needed a little something extra. The substitution play, the Edelman play. That they got the job done. Right. I don't think they're. I honestly don't think they're going to have as tough a time beating Indy as they had beating Baltimore. And I would I would agree with you with that. The only thing I would say this is kind of the final point before we talk about the other game. But um, I think Andrew Luck's a lot better of a quarterback, and that's that kind of. I do, scares but me. I don't Just, think the rest of the team as nearly as good as the team. I could agree with you with that. I think their wide receiving core is better. I think Indianapolis is with Hakeem Nix and T. Y. Hilton. I think they're younger, but really. I think I mean Steve Smith scares the living daylights out of me. See, I but, think that Steve Smith in a big and game. And then you had Tory Smith too. Right. And so that's matching up against the, yeah, and then you have, you know, Fleener to Owen Daniels. Nicks, and then you have um T. Y. Hilton. So That's interesting. I mean like I, I, I In my opinion. Yeah, no, I can't. And I think I both teams that. both teams are not a running team. They don't they don't have running backs to be honest. So no. um I think it'll just be how well Andrew Luck plays, to be honest. I think the I Patriots think are going to play really their game. Well. Patriots are going to play their game. They're not going to come out. I don't think they're going to be bad. I don't think they're going to be fantastic. But if they play their game, they're going to win. If Andrew Luck comes out and plays a game, that you know the best game of his life, he's going to deserve to go to the Super Bowl. I just don't know if it's going to happen. because it's, it's very tough to do with such a fantastic Patriots team. So that, there's, your, there's your summary. So um, right. the other game, the, the NFC game, game, game yeah. the one that I care about um, – the Packers and the Seahawks, the one two rated teams in the NFC, they're playing in Seattle. So do you think the Packers can go into Seattle and get a win? I think they can. I don't think they will though. Okay. Um I think it's very hard for any team to go into Seattle and get a win. Sure. Seattle is a fantastic home team. They have an incredible crowd. I I hope to God before this team um starts going on a downhill track i get to go out to seattle and Ooh, see a game yeah, it's that would, cool. it would be incredible i think that secondary is comparable to the best in nfl history um yeah. I, I i really think that um it's an incredible matchup just watching them go against jordy uh jordy yeah. nelson and um 
his name is Randall Cobb. Right. Um, I, they have that young guy too who Q showed up. I yeah, can't remember his name. Um, He's a rookie though. Yeah. Whatever. But, whatever yeah. Jones maybe. Uh, no, probably not. Whatever. Whatever it was. Yeah. But I uh, I think that Seattle matches up well in that they have obviously Sherman Chancellor. I think um, that somebody had to step in. He played a really good game. They were targeting him all game. But Seattle came out obviously. Carolina wasn't expected to be in that game. Right. Was they hung around for a while. But eventually, I mean, it's it's Seattle. You've got Cam Chancellor jumping through the roof and over the line. Yeah. There's just too much to go up against. Uh, and I still think they're a little bit too much for Green Bay. It'll be interesting to see. I think that for Green Bay to win, it would take them coming out and scoring at least on the opening two possessions and holding Seattle. Because I sure. think that Seattle let Carolina hang around yeah. early in that game. They've been known to let no, teams it's, hang it's around early. That's true. And Green Bay has the firepower to get up early, and they're going to need to get up because the defense isn't going to be able to hold. It, my keys to the game are, I first of all, I think Green Bay played a much, much better team in the Dallas Cowboys than, than the Seahawks played in the Carolina Panthers. I don't think the Carolina Panthers deserve to be in the playoffs to no. be there, first of all. Um, I, think the, I, I think the Packers are going to win it. Really? In the respect that two things happen. Number one, contain Marshawn Lynch. If Marshawn Lynch runs, you can let R- Russell Wilson throw all over you. I don't care. If if you have the two-headed monster of the two of them, you're going to lose. I think if Russell throws, you can easily win. Yeah. If you shut down Marshawn Lynch, which is not an easy task at all, you can win this game. The second thing, so first of all, that defense, the second thing is how well Aaron Rodgers plays. He usually comes out and he does fantastic. Um, he had some, he had some down points in that, in the Dallas game. And he's been, you know, there's been a injury around him since I think it was what the, the Detroit game, yeah. uh, where he got hurt. So that's going to be interesting too. The thing is, if you have the sure hands of Jordy Nelson always around and Rogers throwing to him, it's going to be interesting who Seattle puts on him because the way that Sherman plays is he picks a side and the way the chancellor plays, I believe is that he picks a player. So Regardless, if you put, just say, Chancellor on the same side, Chancellor and Sherman on opposite sides, and you put Nelson and Cobb on the same side as Chancellor, who's taking Cobb? Because I know who's taking Nelson. That's what that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because the way that Sherman I mean, plays, Chancellor's is, not going man on either of them. The way that yeah, no, no, I know, but oh, okay. I'm saying in the respect that they play on opposite sides, so that you always have the you always have one guy that's going to be open if they ever go on the same side because they don't play him on, you know. But you still have Earl Thomas is the thing. You do have Earl you, Thomas. You just have so many layers to that secondary. Yeah, it's so true. hard to beat. It is so hard but to beat. But if there is one guy who can beat it, you would say Tom Brady, but I would say Aaron oh, Rodgers. Oh, no. I don't I, – I think it would be an extremely tough. <laughs> I, think Aaron Rodgers, I think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the game right now. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think he's Though the best Tom winner Brady, in the game. Uh, Tom, yeah. Tom Brady is the guy that – that if I had to like not start a team over, but if I had that quarterback right now, I think I'd pick Tom Brady just with his ability to make no names into sure power all stars, right. which I think is fantastic. So, in that respect, but I think Aaron, if the Aaron Rodgers can throw the ball on this team, Eddie Lacy can at least have a decent game. Eddie Lacy is going to be a really secret weapon that many people don't think about. And then the final factor is. Can they stop Marshawn Lynch? Because I don't I care if Russell Wilson Marshawn throws. Lynch is, is even more important just because watching that game, it is incredible how the stadium and how the they Seahawks blow up anytime he breaks off a big run. He yep. had that, that one big run that got called back because of a holding call yeah. somewhere. Or No, he stepped out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds earlier in the run, so it tacked off like 15 yards. The entire day, Richard Sherman's running onto the field, yep. throwing his helmet up. I mean, it's it's incredible yep. how a buzz the stadium becomes over right. Marshawn Lynch, and I mean, so you have to overcome the skill, yeah. and you have to overcome in a the close momentum. game. If it's a low scoring game, Green Bay is going to get it, and and Seattle's had their woes with scoring because they beat like who was it? I think it was the 49ers, thirteen to six or thirteen yeah. to three, in yeah. like one of the last games of the season. So maybe it was Thanksgiving. Um, if you have one of those games and Lynch can't score for you, you're going to have problems. If you play like you did against Carolina you can easily beat that Green Bay team. So I think coming out, Rodgers has to throw well. And this is all on the side of the Packers. I think if the, the Seahawks play their game and everything's rolling, they're going to win. That's why the number one seed makes sense. That's why they're in the best division this year, quote-unquote. Yeah. So 
I, I think that's the overall. So in the end, I'm having Patriots, Packers, Super Bowl. You're having Patriots, Seahawks. And there you go. So that's that's our roundup. I guess we'll see next week who we're going into and and what we're going to look like. And I don't know next week we're going to have a lot less to talk about in the football scheme, but we can definitely do a Super Bowl preview. Yep. Um, I guess that would be two weeks from now. But regardless, we'll definitely be back. Thank you for joining us. We'd give you the song, but we don't have an iPod cord. So you'll hear it if you see it on YouTube for now. Thank you for joining us. I'm TJ Hardnett. I'm Quinn Kelly. We'll see you next Thursday.